And the Tyranitar here as well, three from those Intimidates. Uh, but there's going to be no Intimidates coming out from Lumi's side. We're going to be seeing the Talon Flame alongside the Lapras. So also very similar to the previous cores that we've seen in that Players' Cup Invitational with the Whimsicott next to the Lapras. Instead, we're going to be seeing Talon Flame as the Tailwind user of choice. Talonflame does have that really nice niche where it is faster than Whimsicott and as long as there's no fake out on the field to block it and nullify its Gale Wind's ability, it does usually get that Tailwind off first before the Whimsicott if it is max speed. But we are going to be seeing the male in DD and Urshifu lead coming out from the Lumi side whilst on Ola's side we are going to be seeing the Cinderace and Tolikis as we do witness the Psychic Surge now uh, taking the... Uh, uh, form while actually revealing a psychic seed on the uh, Indeed, being able to raise its special defense by one stat stage. Yeah, so we'll keep it safe from that token kiss, but. We are seeing the single strike variety of the Urshifu coming out, so it is going to be very threatened down by that Togekiss. Uh, you never want to let your uh, Urshifu take those very moves, and next to a Cinderace that can boost its speed with those max airstreams that it loves to go for, could potentially put the Togekiss faster than the Urshifu. Uh, the, this is going to be the male in DD as well, so there's no potential redirection, but that wouldn't help against the Dazzling Gleam, so this Urshifu is definitely threatened very heavily by this lead coming out from Ola. Uh, the Psychic Seed is going to keep it somewhat safe from the Togekiss, but that doesn't keep it safe from the, the physical moves that the Cinderace will be throwing out as well. And yeah, so it's a really, really strong lead coming out here from Ola, and he looks like he really wants to capitalize on that. It does indeed, and talking about capitalizing, uh, we are going to be seeing the Dynamax coming out from on the side. It is going to be the G-Max Cinderace uh, taking full front uh, for Orla, hoping to be able to give him that turn one advantage and momentum going into turn two. It does naturally outspeed both of its opponents, Pokemon, uh, uh, the Pokemon, sorry. Whilst we do see Lumi go ahead and also retaliate with a Dynamax of her own, uh, which is going to be actually the Urshifu, ladies and gents. G Max Urshifu single strike taking uh, um, its uh, spot now on the field. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of moves they're going to go for. We're actually going to see the Indeedee go for a helping hand. And uh, we do see the Cinderace move immediately after with the Max Airstream does change its typing to flying thanks to that Liberal Mobility. Hidden Mobility actually goes for the Indeedee slot and does pick up the one hit KO. But this Urshifu will be threatening huge amounts of damage thanks to that helping hand. And um, the Max Airstream, of course, does give the Tokus and the Cinderace plus one speed. It'll be interesting to see if the Tokus moves next and it does times four. The super effective against the Urshifu, but it actually survives on a focus sash, ladies and gents. Well, it looks like it would have been going down. Max Lightning comes out, doesn't pick up the K. Oh, oh, it just barely misses as the target is able to survive on a very clutch 3 HP whilst the electric terrain that is now set on the field instead of the psychic terrain. Yeah, what an explosive turn one coming out here. Uh, picking up the knockout on the Indeedee immediately and bringing down the Urshifu down to its focus sash. Uh, crucially, the Tokus outspeeding this Urshifu means that it will be able to just fire off another Dazzling Gleam into the Urshifu without the need for another Airstream from this Cinderace. Uh, maybe it would need to go for another Airstream to put the Tokus faster than the opposing Cinderace, but now that the Dynamax has been used on this Gigantamax Urshifu, that means that the Cinderace on Lumi side can't go for a Dynamax and would be very threatened down by that Cinderace. Oh, the Tokus actually does go for a following this turn round. Uh, whilst the Cinderace on Ola's side is going to go for the Max Airstream. Does it pick up a KO? It looks like it just did. Oh, that's a critical hit, ladies and gents. I'm not sure if the Cinderace tends to be generally frail, but I'm not sure if that mattered in that point. Uh, the Cinderace on Lumi's side is going to be going down, whilst the Tokus will be re redirecting this Max Lightning which is able to pick up the KO on the Togekiss in turn two in contrary to the first turn. Yeah, an interesting choice to go for the follow me with the Togekiss there. Uh, you would have expected it to be able to outspeed the Cinderace, even if that critical hit wouldn't have happened and the Cinderace would have been able to survive. Both Pokemon would have definitely been in range of that Dazzling Gleam from the Togekiss. The Urshifu on one HP definitely would be, and the Cinderace most likely being KO'd to that Airstream anyway. And now we're going to be seeing the Rillaboom joined the Ola's side of the field and the Togekiss on Lumi's side. Uh, the Togekiss will be able to keep that Urshifu safe from the uh, the moves that the Cinderace wants to throw at it. 
first. This Rillaboom could just go for a fake out and out prioritize that follow me from the Tokus. Not going for a flinch onto the Urshifu, it would be enough to do just that one HP of damage that would be necessary to knock it out. And we'll have to see if the Cinderace also carries a steel move that it uh, very often carries as well. Uh, if it doesn't, most likely it's going to be going for a G-Max Fireball as its move of choice into Tokus. That's still going to be doing a lot of damage and potentially putting it in, in range of another attack. But Fake Out is the move of choice of the Rillaboom. Able to pick up a knockout, not needing that flinch yet. Yeah, exactly. So Urshifu being able to get uh, knocked out thanks to that fake out that had the highest of priorities on the field whilst the poor Togekiss on Lumi's side is going to be going for the follow me to not exactly redirect anything away from its ally right now. And um, this G-Max Fireball is going to threaten huge amounts of damage, but it doesn't pick up a KO. Because uh, uh, Togekiss do tend to be quite bulky, especially when the, the more supportive sets So. Unfortunate for Lumi there, maybe not expecting um, Ola to go for the fake out to pick up the KO onto the Urshifu, but regardless, this Tokus is not looking a good spot, Jamie. No, the Cinderace has lost its Dynamax, but it is definitely put in the work here. Uh, being able to take out two of the Pokemon, the real being able to finish off the final one, and yeah, this Tokus isn't going to be able to pull it back for Lumi here. Yeah, exactly. I, I just think that. Ola was able to get all of that momentum off through that huge explosive turn one of the game, um, which you tend to see, especially in the current post-DLC format. A lot of hyper-offensive strategies and moves are being played out. It's all of, about trying to gain that momentum straight off the bat, being able to dictate the rest of the game, if you can, and force your opponent into game two at a disadvantage. And I think Ola was able to completely capitalize off of that. I think that was both showing the benefits of hyper offense and the downsides pretty much the same because they're both very hyper offensive teams, but showing how crucial the leads can be in those hyper offensive games uh, with yeah. the lead of the Cinderace and Togekiss against the Indeedee and the Urshifu. That just meant that Ola had all the momentum even before clicking a single attack. And there really wasn't too many ways that Lumi could could get back into the into the game. The Mats Lightning, even with the helping hand, not able to take out the Togekiss. Uh, Togekiss being able to outspeed the Urshifu after an airstream as well. Uh, really crucial information going forward. And yeah, uh, Lumi really has to reconsider her lead here if she wants to be able to deal with that Cinderace and Togekiss. But then at the same time, Ola could completely switch things up. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I was kind of... I mean, I understand why Lumi didn't bring the Lapras, because Rillaboom is such a threat for it. But as long as you're able to maybe get rid of the Rillaboom, I, I feel like the Lapras could do some solid work uh, against... As long as it could try to further extend the longevity of her team. But regardless, we're going to be going into this. I'll be really interested to see if Lumi has gone ahead and tried to change it up as well as on Ola, because Ola does have the opportunity to just stick with the same Pokemon or try to counter a potential counter lead from Lumi's side. So we are going to see Lumi actually bring the Lapras this time around in game two, accompanied by the Talon Flame. Well, Ola is going to be also switching it up and bringing the Trick Room mode with the Dust Box and the Togekiss once the Frisk does come off. Yeah, seeing an expert belt on that Talon Flame. Quite an interesting move choice there. Um, being able to both boost the, the flying type moves against those wind cots, like with that Jewel Wood Wind Beat that we see with Talon Flame, but also boosting the fire moves against super effective hits. But yeah, complete switch up from Ola here. Going for the Tokus Dust Box, really wanting to get that Trick Room up and catching that Talon Flame Lapras really well, which would have been very effective against the Cinderace Tokus, but instead facing down that potential Trick Room now. Are we are going to be seeing the Dynamax come out from Lumi, then it is going to be that Gigantamax Lapras um, being able to transform itself into this elegant yet highly threatening form. Um, not only threatening damage, but also the opportunity to get in on the roll belt up. But the teleport actually moves first, no follow me. Does actually get a Storm Top onto the Dust Box, whilst the Targetus goes and gets a Yorm successfully up onto the Lapras in turn and while the G-Max Resonance does come up from the Lapras and does not pick up the KO although it does threaten a huge amount of damage output while getting that Aurora Veil up uh, straight up the whilst the poor Dust Box actually isn't able to get that Trick Room up Jeremy. Yeah, not going for the redirection with the Togekiss. That would have been a guaranteed trick room for the Dust Locks, but instead, 
wanting to put that Lapras to sleep. And we're seeing the, the detriment of not acquiring that light bulb that we've seen so commonly on the Lapras. Uh, light Clay was the, the item of choice very early in the format and does seem to be here as well. So the Aurora Veil is going to be up for those full eight turns rather than the five. But because it lacks that off offensive pressure, not able to take out the Topias here with that resonance. And now the, the Lapras is going to be going to sleep if it wants to stay in. And if it wants to switch out, it's losing its Gigantamax. It doesn't look like it's switching out because that's what tends to be the slowest thing on the field and it was the only thing moving right there, switching out whilst the Tyranta does take its place. So the following does come out from the Toad Kiss on Ola's side, trying to redirect maybe another call or maybe even just an attack as well. And we do actually see the Tor coming out, um, so well played from Lumi there, that want to try to shut down any Polomy potential, but at the same time Max Lightning still would have been able to pick up the KO as we did just witness. From that Lapras, it does set the electric terrain. So this actually was a really well played um, move from Lumi because we saw the Yawn going up in turn one, but I don't think we're going to see the sleep go off during turn two. Yeah, really smart use of Max Lightning there. Uh, very interesting to see a Max Lightning come out from a Light Clay Lapras. You tend to see Perish Song a lot more commonly as that move of choice instead of the Thunderbolt or Thunder to get that Max Lightning. But Max Lightning coming in absolutely clutch here. Uh, Yawn being completely useless on the Lapras. And now the Lapras is able to fire off one more of its Max moves of choice. Uh, the, the, dust, the Dust Cops did switch out, so it would need to be taunted again to stop another Trick Room. And that would be stopping a Tailwind being set that turn if the Tunnel Flame wants to stop that Trick Room. And the Tyranitar are coming in, uh, in onto the field. It will be interesting to see the speed interactions between the Tyranitar and the Lapras. If you've got a Talon Flame on your side of the field, it's probably going to be quite a fast Lapras, but Tyranitar can be faster than that Lapras as well. But the Dust Hops is still threatening Trick Room as well, so... It'll be very interesting to see the speed interactions, whether the Talon Flame decides to go for that spawn, guarantee that it stops the Trick Room, uh, but potentially allow the Tyranitar to still outspeed the Lapras and get a huge max rock fall off into the Lapras instead. Yeah. Or if it wants to go for the Tailwind, guarantee that the Lapras will be moving first instead. Yeah, and we are going to be seeing the switch up from that Toad Kiss. does want to be able to get that follow me uh, potential in following turns. Whilst we do see the Ritter Boom coming in, does set the grassy terrain, so it gets rid of the electric terrain whilst uh, being able to threaten the potential fake out the following turn. But the Tunnel Flame is just going to go for the Tailwind, and um, the Lapras is just going to be threatening huge amounts of damage. Max Geyser coming out right now, does actually go into the Ritter Boom slot, so might be scared of blocking a weakness policy onto the Tyranta. Whilst it does pick up a triple hit, that's added a bit more chip, of course, but not as much as you would have expected, understandably. Rock Slide does come out in turn from the Tyranta and does pick up the KO on the Tunnel Flame while stealing relatively small chip damage onto the Lapras. Yeah, great turn coming out from Lumi here. Uh, very risky going for Tailwind in front of Dust Ops. There was the potential to be taunted, but Lumi was able to read into Ola, Ola fearing that, switching out into the Rillaboom. And now the Rillaboom, because it came onto the field before this Indeedy, that means we are going to be getting the Psychic Terrain instead of that Grassy Terrain. That means that there's going to be no Fake Outs coming out from the Rillaboom here. And the Tailwind set up now means that this Lapras and the Indeedy will be moving first before this Dranitar and Rillaboom. And there's not even a Priority Grassy Glide that can come out this turn because the Psychic Terrain has been has overwritten the Grassy Terrain, so looking at a really nice position for, for Lumi. She's even able to overwrite the, the Sandstorm as well, so Tyranitar doesn't have its special defense boost from that Sandstorm. Instead, going to be really threatened down by the Water Moves coming out from the Lapras. Ola still does have access to his Dynamax if he wants to go for the G-Max with the Rillaboom to go for a big drum solo, or if he wants to overwrite the, the rain with the Sand, but he's going to be switching out that Tyranitar into the Dust Ops. Uh, we are going to be seeing the dust drops coming uh, straight back in. Expanding force does come out from Lumi's indeed. Threatens good amount of damage. Critical hit on the dust drops. Uh, I was going to say that looked like too much damage. But Blackfoot does go for the free try and unfortunately for itself doesn't pick up the KO. The Rillaboom does go for knockoff onto the indeed, revealing the item. Oh, not revealing, sorry, the item, of course, because it was a psychic speed. But of course, it was. Um, Smaller damage output that it would have had compared to the Dean Dean Sculpting Yeah, one of, one of the benefits of the Psychic Seed there. Uh, even though it doesn't help against the physical hits, Knockoff being a physical hit was reduced by not having an item. 
and yeah, and there, there's still going to be no trick room from this Dust Cops. This is once again going to be switching out, and the Trent is going to be overwriting the rain here. And uh, the Tarantula, like you said, is going to be overriding the rain. Does get its sand up. And in the, there is going to be a water type move going into it and get a weakness monster from expanding for some amount of course. The Tarantula is immune to it. Unfortunately, Riddle Boom isn't, and it is going to be going down. So all of us preferred to actually sacrifice the terrain rather than the weather. Hydro Pump does land onto the Tyrantha from that Lapras does drop the weakness policy as well. So now we're gonna be seeing the Dust Locks coming back in, maybe threatening unless the indeed it does have imprisoned trick room, threatening a potential trick room setup. But even before that, this Tyrantha is in a position where it does not want to be messed. Yeah, it's going to be very close if another Hydro Pump is able to take out that Tyranitar. Uh, Indeedy, usually only known for carrying only expanding forces in its offensive move, can't touch this Tyranitar at all. And would we'll do a nice chunk of damage to the Dustbox, but it does really have to carry the Imprison to, to stop the Dustbox going for the Trick Room. But at the same time, the Tyranitar would be able to take out that Indeedy before the Dustbox did go for that Trick Room if they go for it on the same turn. And like we said before, Odai still does have access to his Dynamax. Tranus has taken about half of its HP in damage, so uh, not the most beneficial use of the Dynamax, but he still has access to it, so he might as well go for it. And yeah, it'll, it'll be, it'll be re reducing the damage output from this Lapras. Maybe it would be able to take another two Hydro Pumps coming out from the Lapras as well. And so we'll have to see if this indeed is, is able to get an Imprison off, or if it's just going to be going down to an attack from the Tyranitar as the Dust Ops is allowed to set up the Trick Room. Yeah, and we actually completely forgot about the fact that Ola still has the Dynamax potential on his end, and it is going to be the Tyranta Dynamaxing right now. Threatening KOs left and right. Imprisoned Dust Up from the Indeedee revealed. So that Dust Box, if it is trying to go for a Trick Room, it won't be able to get it. But guess what? It does avoid the Hydro Pump from that Lap Breast Well, a Max Way comes out from the Tyranta and is more than enough to pick up the KO onto it while boosting the special defense of both the Tyranta and the Dust Box, making this dynamic duo so strong special defensively wise because Dust Box is known to be so bulky. But guess what? Because that indeed went down, the Trick Room from the Dust Box was not, no longer in prison, Jamie. That is insane. Yeah, and, and one of the downsides of Imprison here, it's very successful at stopping Trick Room, but you have to survive and stay on the field for it to be able to at least seal that first turn of Imprison. And yeah, it was, it was the Indeedee was always going to be KO2, a move coming out from the Tyranitar. Urshifu is a good Pokemon to be facing down against the Tyranitar. Uh, we'll have to see if the Tyranitar has access to a Superpower or a Brick Break to be able to threaten super effective damage against this Urshifu. But this is still going to be good damage coming out from this Dust Ops with this Pain Split. Oh yeah, it does get a lot of HP back from that. The Max Wait from the Tyranitar does come out next. Um, into that Urshifu slot does pick up the KO. So uh, Olaf choosing very wisely who he's targeting this turn round because um, he wants the Lapras to feel like it's more useless on the field, but doesn't pick up the KO on the Urshifu. But Hydro Pump does land from the Lapras into the Dust Ops, but barely does any damage. Urshifu does actually pick up the KO with close combat onto the Tyranitar. Insane thing for witnessing right here, ladies and gentlemen. Because I was so sure that Max Quake was gonna pick up the KO version boost, but guess what? It didn't. Yeah, but the Sandstorm is still around, and the Urshifu was put very low, definitely in range of this Sandstorm. So now we've got a very interesting Lapras Dust Drops end game. Uh, not usually the end game you want to be in if you're the Lapras player, because uh, we did see that it did carry that Lightning instead, whether that's the Thunder or Thunderbolt. So probably not going to have access to that Perish Song. And even if it did go for that Perish Song, the Dust Ops would be able to control the speed, control who was able to faint last and the Dust Ops would be able to win in this situation. So maybe the, the Lapras needs to go for something like a Freeze Dry Freeze to be able to stop this Dust Ops from being able to recover with the Pain Split, but it's just going to start slowly chipping away with that Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, the Will-O-Wisp does come out, does land on the Lapras, inflicts that burn status, whilst Freeze Dry, hoping maybe for a Freeze, unfortunately for Lumi's and uh, wasn't able to pick it up. So I like the part where you said very interesting um, <laughs> end game right now between these two. <laughs> um, I know for a fact it wouldn't be as interesting, it'd be very terrifying if that Lapras had some sort of recovery 
on it, but so far we they don't usually run it and we don't expect it to, to see it um, in any way, shape or form. So this, that's what should be rounding this up, Jamie. Uh, I'm, I'm going to surprise you with, with my Resto Chesto Lapras in, in future matches then, because I'll be able to win this end game. But yeah, it is, really just need some free strike freezes here with this Lapras. Not the best of chances, but if there is still a chance, you do want to be going for it. The Sandstorm is going to subside, so it's only going to be Burn Chip as, uh, at the end of the turn to the Lapras. But it is, it is put very low here, and it looks like Bulldoze is the move of choice over Nightshade. So not going to be doing Ooh. as much damage to the Lapras, but is going to be probably enough to chip away enough at this Lapras. Yeah, I think so. And even when we're going to be outside of Trickle, it just keeps on trying to drop the Lapras' speed. And it, it's just the burn. The burn was able to be played out well on this dust box, maybe anticipating this kind of scenario and saying, listen, if I can't get them down with any Nightshade, Maybe they just burn them and whittle them down because of how bulky this stuff was. Yeah, looks like we're going for the most powerful move that the Lapis can go for with that Hydro Pump. And yeah, look at that damage, so powerful. Um, wait, wait, you, can, you, can, you can see one of the, the downsides of not having the Life Orb. I guess with the Life Orb, you'd be taking a lot of Life Orb chip with the Lapras, but that's, that is one of the downsides of opting for something like that Life Plate. You're just really not doing the damage with the Lapras, and Stustlops is able to just finish off the game here with another Bulldoze. It's easily going to shrug off the side of Unless it's somehow a critical hit, and then it just wins the game for him. But no, for her, I'm sorry, but it's not indeed. The Dustbox is going to be going for that Bulldoze, and will be giving this game to Olaf Peterson to Norway, ladies and gents, against Lumi representing Finland. So very well played from both players. I feel like that. It, how, how different was that game one with game two? Can we just talk about that for a second? Yeah, it was very explosive in game one, going with that Cinderace strategy, uh, boosting up the speeds with the Airstream. Uh, is, is one way of controlling the speeds. And we got to see the other the other dynamic with that Trick Room, with the Dust Ops instead, being equally as effective in securing Ola the victory here. Yeah, and I think, I think Ola was able to do it very well. Like he, he recognized what his win cons were against Lumi. And Lumi felt like at some point she, she brought that Lapras in game two, right? She brought the Talon Flame. It has Taunt as well. She read, maybe it was a read, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was just a safe Taunt, so the Tokus doesn't redirect. But regardless, was able to get that taunt off on the dust box, shut down the trick room mode, get the aurora veil, light play, um, extended uh, G Max resonance, of course, and uh, dealt good damage, positioned herself well. But over time, I felt like even though the Lapras was able to get the aurora veil going for Lumi's side, for some reason, Ola benefited over time because he was able to have that super bulky dust box in the back. He had the Max Quakes going when he was able to position the Tyranta in the perfect situation where it gets a weightless policy proc as well. And I feel like from that point on, was just able to just run away with game two. Yeah, it was really clever the way that Ola was switching around in that end game, uh, being able to take a Hydro Pump in the Sandstorm rather than the Rain, which would probably picked up the knockout on the Tyranitar as well. Uh, did have to sacrifice about half of his HP with the Tyranitar. Uh, being in order to be able to take that weakness policy and then go for the Dynamax, but it was still an effective Dynamax, uh, just enough to be able to pick up the knockout on that Urshifu factoring in the Sandstorm as well. So it wasn't too important that the Tyranitar did go down because the Dust Cobbs was able to, to finish up the game for Ola. Yeah, 100%. And I think it's just like you said, it was the switch-ins and switch-outs. Notice that Ola waited for the right moment to be able to utilize Dynamax. Louis went straight ahead and did it because, understandably, you've got a Lapras, you want to try to get Aurora Veil going and deal huge amounts of damage. But the Lapras has such an outrageously huge base HP stat, so it's able to just sit there and tank the hits. It's like play, uh, this set, but if it was, for example, a weakness policy, then it could have dealt even more damage. So that's why you see Lapras's, they're starting to become a bit more offensive with the current format, and it's really exciting to see and interesting. I'd say exciting and interesting, because we saw the explosions in game one, but game two was a whole different ball game. But regardless, that was it. That was game one of today, ladies and gents. Norway is going to be able to go ahead and pick up that win, thanks to Ola. So very well played to both players. What we are going to be doing, we're going to go on...